If you're someone who's wanting to meditate more or you're struggling to get a good practice going, here are four tips or steps to a successful meditation every single time. The first is to sit up with your back straight. You wanna align your spine and there's a very biologically significant reason for it that has to do with how the body is set up. You see, there is a tiny pinhole that runs through your entire spinal column through which something called cerebrospinal fluid flows. This fluid actually runs up and down the spine, but only when all of those pinholes are connected. So when you're slouched or you're, you know, not sitting perfectly straight, that fluid doesn't flow. But when it does flow, it essentially goes all the way up to the center of the brain, to the pineal gland, and back down to the root and creates this energetic column or energetic current that runs all the way up and down your spine. This is the biological correlation to what we often would call the kundalini or the chakra column pillar of energy that runs through the body. So you want to sit up straight to create the opening in those pinholes to allow that fluid to flow. The second step is creating deep rhythmic breaths. By becoming calm and centered and breathing nice inhale and exhale rhythms, you naturally actually help to circulate the energy through your body, circulating also the cerebrospinal fluid, which sends energy up to the pineal gland, opening and activating the third eye and crown, and grounding that information or that cosmic energy that you're bringing in down in your body. You're also naturally, by creating a deep rhythmic breath, creating something called psychophysiological coherence, which is the harmony between the brain and the heart and the body. As we know from the Institute of Heart Math and the work of Noetic Sciences, the body has a large electromagnetic field around it, and the heart especially emanates that field regularly, but it's very weak if we ourselves are in a discordant state. If our mind and our heart are not in sync with each other, then we end up becoming a chaotic field unto ourselves. Our thoughts and our mind and our feeling are not synchronized or harmonized with each other. We may end up thinking one thing, feeling another thing, not knowing how those fit together, acting another way, and we ourselves do not come to express the light of the soul within ourselves or the highest possible version of who we can be. So sitting down to meditate every day and doing this straight spine, deep breath, automatically, even if that's all you do, can help to create that inner harmony and well-being that we might not otherwise have. Now the next step is actually a form of visualization, but it starts with pointing your eyes while your eyes are closed at the space between the eyebrows, like right here. So you're kind of going lightly cross-eyed with your eyes closed. You wanna be pointing your eyes there, and the reason for that is because you are inviting your thoughts and your mind to synchronize your brain in your center point of the brain, which is of course where the pineal gland and the pituitary glands are. And that helps to bring these two hemispheres of the brain into a coherence with each other. So with the breathing, we're bringing the heart and the mind into synchronization. And then with the third eye visualization and the pointing of the eyes there, you're bringing the left and the right hemispheres together. Then on top of that, if you want to be imagining like a bright white light or using your imagination to invite in thoughts or ideas about the ideal version of yourself or what it is that you're trying to cultivate or manifest or create in life, that also helps to bring those ideas into your mind, into your body, and they send good signals to your cells, which then sends those signals to the DNA, which invites the DNA to inform the cells how to behave better. This is of course documented very well by Dr. Bruce Lipton in his book, The Biology of Belief, wherein he demonstrates that the DNA and the different codons or genes in the body can actually express themselves differently depending on the signals that we get. So if we're actively sending ourselves or receiving signals from the environment and even within our own thoughts of love, trust, virtue, kindness, happiness and health and longevity or these kinds of things, then our DNA is actually going to express itself better than if we're walking around with thoughts like, I hate myself, I hate everybody, this person sucks, this global system sucks, whatever it is that we can get really angry and bitter about. Of course, there are things to be angry about in life because life is filled with all kinds of suffering and 
big issues that we're dealing with, but if we're able to deal with them from an enlightened place and rise above the muck through these practices, then we have a much easier time of solving those problems. The last step to a successful meditation is actually a form of mantra. So while you're in this state, straight back, breathing deep, visualizing here, you can also then recite or say in a rhythm within your mind or even out loud different affirmations or chants or mantras. Now mantras, as in say Sanskrit mantras that come from India, are very powerful. And this is because that language, along with many other ancient languages like Hebrew or Arabic, are replete with the power of the vibration of the thing that it is that they're trying to represent. Whereas we, we kind of miss that in the English language today or more of the modern languages that exist, the words that we're using don't carry the same vibrational energy or force that they did or do in ancient languages. Om Mani Padme Hum or Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which means Om. It's invoking the vibration of creation itself, followed by peace, peace, peace. If you are reciting something like that and you're focusing on the peace or the meaning of what that mantra is representing, then you're able to bring that vibration into you in a very strong way. Now, on the other hand, you can also use affirmations. Of course, you might remember the breath of life with, I love myself, I trust myself, I honor myself, I value myself. You can also be reciting something like that, or I'm going to have a great day, I'm going to have a great day, you know, and, and keep repeating it until you start to believe it. Because the thing is, is you want to be feeling and believing in what it is, the affirmations or the mantras that you're saying or repeating to get yourself vibrating that resonance inside as deeply as possible. When you do that, you're able to essentially expand your field, your energetic field, both deeper within yourself and out into the world. And you become an instrument of the divine living in life, at least the divine within you coming forth and participating more fully in life rather than just existing as sort of a strange mix of different thoughts and feelings and actions that aren't unified together with the spiritual will within you. So with that, these you now have the four essential basic principles of meditation that you can use anytime to bring yourself into that state of coherence, rise above all of your struggles, and live a better version of yourself. If these helped, please put it in the comments and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day.